We've got uh, all right. Um, our presenter tonight is Clifton, and uh, I really, really encourage you. He's a a, a YouTuber, like kind of like a Mr. Beast guy, or um, you know, uh, any of those guys with millions of followers. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a Clifton's got a really fantastic YouTube channel that I I will put a link to it in the chat. Um, and uh, that's how I, I I discovered him. His his videos are fantastic. Really a, a great teacher. Um, he runs a web agency as well. Uh, he's done for for quite some time. Uh, but uh, I discovered him through his YouTube channel, which is called Clifton WP. So if you go into YouTube and look for that, uh, you'll find it. And uh, he does really really great tutorials on. Um, just building pages out and in Gutenberg and in particular with the cadence theme and cadence blocks is kind of his, uh, his, his thing. I think he's open for other things, but, but that's his, that's his main thing. And they're really, really great. So, um, I will, uh, he's going to talk about the business side of WordPress and, um, I can't wait. So without further ado, here is Clifton Mben Benign. Uh, oh, oh, I better look at <laughs> Why don't you say your last name for us? Mbanago. Mbanago. Okay. Also pronounced WP. <laughs> right. <just> Clifton WP. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so, well, thank no, you for it's... joining us tonight, Clifton. Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much for having me, David. Yep. I appreciate yep. uh, the opportunity to come out and speak. And thank you for the kind words about my, uh, my tutorials and uh, my of YouTube course. venture here. I really appreciate that. So am I, is it okay if I share a screen? Um, what I have is I just have a little presentation. I'm going to go through it. And then uh, at the end, I, I guess I could just be open to any questions, but specifically I'm going to be talking about uh, the business side of, uh, of WordPress and give a little backstory to how I came to be where I am. So is it okay if I share? Yeah, you should be able to. Okay, great. So let's pull this up here. Okay. All right. Can everyone see that? Yep. All right. So uh, I wanted to talk about how to have a successful and sustainable web business because, you know, this is actually what I do and what I've been doing for the last 20 years. I have a web development company called Clifton Creative Web. And uh, essentially, I started building. Gosh, I've been building websites since about 1996. Uh, first get, got introduced to it all actually in 94. Didn't take it really seriously because it was gobbledygook back then. Um, but as it started to improve, I really got into it um, a lot. So and I, so I've been in this, in this space for over 20 years. Um, and uh, I have... And my agency is, is pretty much what I do full time. The, the Clifton WP is the education side of what I'm doing. I, I love to teach. I love to uh, help people better understand web technology or any kind of uh, programming or design. And uh, I hopped on YouTube and decided to start doing that with some of the tools that are available uh, out there. Now, specifically, what I wanted to talk about, uh, and just from my perspective of what's what happened with me and what I encourage everyone to do um, essentially is specifically what happened with me and, and WordPress. Okay. So there are WordPress actually allowed me to do something uh, pretty amazing. So if we, if we go back to about 2000 and 2004, I'd heard about WordPress. Um, a potential uh, client had come to me and was asking me about, taking their blog or creating a blog and making it into a website and something like that. So I took a look at it because back then we were still building with HTML and CSS and some Dream, Dreamweaver stuff and things like that. So I took a look at it and I, I really didn't like it at all. I just thought that this was, this was pointless and you know, you're never going to be able to build anything nice or, or beautiful with it. So I completely ignored it until about 2006, 2007, uh, I took a look at it again, and only because we were putting together an event 
And a friend uh, that was part of the event team said, hey, let's, let's put together a website. We can do one really quickly with this thing called WordPress. And I said, wow, that thing is still around? <laughs> okay, well, let, let's see, you know, how does it work? And so he kind of showed it to me. And at that point, my interest was really peaked. And what really piqued my interest was it, it still didn't look all that great, but it had all this other functionality, this, this thing called plugins that you could install and you could have instant functionality all of a sudden. Uh, and that really interested me uh, a lot. But anyway, fast forward another couple of years and um, I decided to, to really dive into it. And the, the platform or the, the framework I was using back then was uh, StudioPress. And uh, back then they had revolution themes or, or something or the revolution theme. And I was building a website for a church and uh, the revolution theme actually was, had, a, had a church theme. So I used that and I was amazed at how quickly I was able to put it together. Now, I already know how to, I could write code. I could uh, write PHP and HTML and CSS and JavaScript. But I realized that I was able to implement very, very quickly. Uh, with this. And so uh, I became even more intrigued and I kind of stuck with it from, from then on. Uh, when Revolution Den or Studio Press introduced Genesis, it was the first time that we were actually able to create a uh, homepage completely made out of widgets instead of uh, writing uh, extra PHP code to create a, a front.php. We could just register a bunch of widgets, make that the home page, and then drag and drop things in there. It's kind of like the first drag and drop experience. And once that happened, and then subsequent uh, platforms started coming out to support it, uh, I made the decision to just drop all the other ways we were building web websites and just focus on, on WordPress. And with the rapid implementation, it actually helped my business grow because now we were able to develop websites faster. We had a good designer, so we could just design things and convert it to WordPress, and uh, we were serving up websites faster at the same at the same cost, same price, making us more profitable. And uh, I've stuck with it ever since. Okay, so my business today, uh, from that point, my business today is a completely sustainable web development business. There are six people in the team. It started with me, but now I have six other people that are following a very simple system that we use to build out these websites. And the way we've structured the business has actually allowed us to have very decent recurring revenue and the business pretty much sustains itself. So I can, I can take time off, even though I don't, <laughs> but I could and come back and the website was, and the business will still be running uh, very well. And we've kind of graduated from the position of having to chase projects to where people come to us for projects uh, now, and we can choose which projects we want to work on and not have it be based on uh, whether we need the funds or not, okay? So these are the three, when I was putting this together, I was like, well, what are the three simple things that I could tell anyone who's thinking about starting a business that's based on WordPress, starting a web business? And the three comp components that I came up with that, I, that I, I believe allowed us to be successful is that we have a very reliable and repeatable web solution system. So the first thing I always recommend people is just pick one platform and become a master at that, become an expert at it and just stick with it. And even within WordPress itself, you'll find different frameworks. I even suggest picking one framework and just becoming great at that, at that framework. It's one of the reasons why I focus so much on cadence on my channel. I know other frameworks. I know, you know, Beaver Builder and Elementor and all the other ones, Genesis, Genesis Extender and so on, Oxygen. They're all great. And they all can, you can all do great things. It all really depends on the person. But I just say, you know, pick one that you're going to be a master of and then let that sort of drive the foundation of your business. Then you want to have, you want to have a specific customer that has an online problem. For us, it's businesses or local businesses who don't have the time to research good web design or uh, marketing strategies online with the web. And they rely on a web designer or a web agency uh, to fulfill that need for them. And then the third thing, which is the most important, is productize your service uh, plus recurring revenue. So I'm going to go through these one, one by one, and I'll kind of share some stories with you guys on uh, how we implemented this. So reliable and repeatable web 
solution. So the foundation of all our projects is WordPress, period. If somebody came to me and said, hey, we wanted you to build something in Drupal or Expression Engine or something else, that's just not a customer for us. We have to refer them somewhere else. If we can't do it, with, if we can't do it within WordPress, then we don't want the project. It, we can build other things in other, other platforms, but we just found that this just makes it a lot easier. That way we're really focused on, uh, on projects that we can build with WordPress. Now, that being said, to be honest with you, majority of our clients never actually ask about the platform we're using. Uh, it's, it's rare. Typically, when somebody comes to us and they say, hey, we want you to build something and we want you to build it in WordPress, we become very suspicious and we start putting them through a qualifying process right there and then. And the reason why is because we found that the client at the end of the day, they don't really care what platform you're using. That's more our thing. And what they really care about is, can you provide the solution for them, the, the online digital solution that they're looking for? And we just found that WordPress can fulfill almost every single, every single need that we've come across in the local business space. So we don't run around calling ourselves WordPress experts. As a matter of fact, you'll, you'll, you'll see that we don't even include WordPress in any of our material. It's just a tool, just like a mechanic has a great tool that they use to fix cars. They don't run around talking about their tools. But among, amongst our circles, we'll talk about it because, you know, we love it. So, and WordPress is, is something that is, to us, it is very reliable. Here are some of the reasons why we like it. Low overhead and open source. So we can extend it as much as we want. Universal functionality. So there's a lot of functionality in WordPress. And because it's supported by developers and uh, plugin creators, you know, you can almost find any kind of functionality that you're looking for. And if you have the coding chops, you can extend that functionality yourself. Rapid implementation. Uh, thanks to great hosting companies, you can actually spin up a WordPress website in no time and then start adding the plugins that you need. And then it's just a matter of creating the design and then any custom functionality that your client needs. And then there's an accessible community. One of the things that I love about the uh, about using WordPress is almost for any problem, you can find someone who's willing to help you. Now, some people don't, don't respond, but for the most part, most people do. And then there's people who are creating videos such as myself and others on YouTube uh, to help teach people how to use the different components in WordPress. So when, you're, if, when we think about it from a business perspective, there is a certain amount of uh, risk and trepidation that people may have sometimes, but there's also good support uh, that you can rely on. All right. The other thing is we, we invest in great web tools. Okay. So I'm a big evaluator of anything WordPress, any new plugin. And I love plugins that are uh, plugins and themes and, that come in a kind of a framework. So if you look at Cadence as an example, they have the Cadence theme, they have Cadence uh, Gutenberg blocks, and then they have a whole host of other supporting plugins. And if I could go back and they were around back then, I would just take all of that and only focus on that and try not to mix things uh, up because there are other similar types. But I, I tell people, just look at a, look at a company, uh, evaluate them very well, look at their support and look at the tools that they provide and see if it's something that you want to uh, invest in. At the same time, you don't want to be too married to anything because things change in this, in this space and they change very quickly. So you always have to be kind of on the lookout for, you know, things that are great, but you also want to avoid that shiny object syndrome and uh, pick one thing that you can be great at. And then uh, at the end of the day, that will, that will run your business, but always invest in the business. All right. Define a specific customer with a specific problem. So you want to define your ideal customer. And I'll tell you what ours was. Ours was the local business owner who knew that the web was important, having a web presence, not just a website, but having a web presence was important, but they didn't have the time, they didn't have the expertise, they didn't have the knowledge to be able to, uh, to do that effectively, okay? So when we talk to our potential clients, we always let them know we're, that we're actually looking to be partners. We're looking to create a relationship. We're not really interested in coming in and, and doing one project and, and disappearing. We really want to help them better understand how, the, how they can leverage the web to build their business. So there's a lot of education that comes with uh, what we do, and there's a lot of value added other than, just, other than just building a website. There's a lot of things that we'll be doing for them as well. 
think about it. Most of them don't know much about hosting. They don't know much about SSL certificates, search engine optimization, content, right? I don't know if you've ever, if any of you build websites, if you've ever had a, a client write their own content, <laughs> they don't know much about that, that there are formulas for all those kinds of things. So we're here to support them and be partners in that. And most of our clients that hire us actually keep us on uh, for the long term. So I've, I've had the benefit of enjoying 10, 12, 15 year relationships with clients that are still retaining us till this day. Okay. You want to define their, their challenges, which I just did. And then you want to create a clear solution. And what's great about it is, you know, when I, I remember when I first started, uh, clients would always ask me, well, who's your, who's on your team? You know, who do you, who do you work with? And I didn't have a team because when I was getting started in this business, I was actually starting from a very difficult uh, place. The, the market had just crashed. I was actually dabbling in some real estate, completely lost all my, all my properties. And I was actually looking at some hard skills that I had that I could turn into a business. And I remembered, yeah, you know, I, I, I used to build websites. So maybe let me see what the web space is doing these days. And that's how I came across WordPress. And so when people would ask me, well, what was your team? Uh, I, would, I would just tell them, well, it's, you know, I'm the face of it. You're going to see me. I can actually do the work. But I use software that's backed up by, by developers, and, and that's my team. So if I ever run into an issue, if I run into an issue with my hosting, with the hosting, then I have a hosting support that I can rely on. If I run into an issue with the plugin, I have a plugin developer I can rely on. And if I run into an issue with the theme I'm using, there are, there are teams of people that can help me with that as well. So uh, it allowed me to be more confident and more comfortable talking to clients about what I was going to be building for them. All right, here's my business sustainability formula, okay? Uh, I didn't come up with this uh, until maybe about, <laughs> maybe three, four years ago. You wanna productize your service and you want to add recurring revenue. So productize your service plus recurring revenue. This is the one mistake that I made in the beginning of my business up until about 100, 100 clients. I did not have any kind of ongoing website maintenance agreements or anything like that. Matter of fact, when I first got started, because I didn't really understand the, the space and the business very well, I actually made a very silly mistake. I actually was offering people lifetime maintenance because I just thought, you know, with WordPress, when you put it up and you build everything, you put it together, it just they could just maintain it themselves. They can go back there and click update. And, and do stuff, you know, and that was a big mistake because what I realized is that a lot of my clients were not interested in being web designers or WordPress experts or any of that. They were interested in doing their business. So the plumber wants to do plumbing. The dentist wants to do dental work, right? The mortgage company, they want to do mortgages. They don't want to be back there doing updates, trying to figure out why this is broken and why that isn't working anymore and what the new version of WordPress is and all of that. So um, I made the mistake of almost making them feel like they could run the websites themselves. And some could, but majority of them could not. So what kept happening is they kept coming back to me, some of them years later, and, I'm, and I was still doing this free work. When I got my head straight and kind of understood how it worked and what I was supposed to do, <laughs> then I implemented a recurring maintenance plan. And that recurring maintenance plan is actually what helped my business skyrocket and help it be sustainable. So, you know, we are not in a position where we're, uh, you know, we're, we're pitching or we're looking for projects. We have enough revenue coming in from our, our maintenance work that we can actually choose projects and, and, not, and not go with projects that are probably not a good fit for us. This is one thing that I would say it's, it's mandatory. It's a must. You have to implement some kind of recurring service. The best way I've explained it to my clients who've kind of, who, who've ever bucked against this or had an issue with it uh, is I told them, you know, you want me to be around when something goes wrong with your website and something will go wrong. There isn't a single thing that you have in this world that just stays the same. Even a rock at some point would degrade. So every, you know, you buy a car, you buy a house, you, you pay for anything. Eventually that thing will have a problem and you're going to need to get it fixed. It's the same thing with the website. It may be a digital asset, 
but it is going to break down in some way. You're going to have a problem or you're going to want to modify something and you're going to need me at that time. So it's better to keep me on hand versus having to go out and find somebody else or find somebody new or abandon the, the entire project yourself. So this is something that I tell people we actually, you know, we have to do. And I'll show you how I handle, uh, I'll tell you how I handle people who may not want to do that, who may say, oh, I just want to, I just want you to build it, but we don't need you to maintain it. Okay. So here are the two, here are the revenue sources if you have a web business. Okay. I don't do all of these things, but I do at least majority of them. Okay. So on one side, you have the one-time payments. You can do web design as a one-time payment. You can do web development for a one-time payment. You can do one-off web consulting, integrations, and logo design. But on the other side, the recurring payments, that's really where a lot of your, uh, a lot of your sustainability is going to be. And it's really what you want to put in sort of in front of the business. You want to have this mindset when you're talking to a client. Website maintenance, content management, search engine optimization, uh, website hosting, coaching, and general web uh, services. Now, I, we, don't, we don't do website hosting ourselves, but we do manage our clients' hosting for them so that they don't have to interface with the hosts. We do. Okay, so, and you can bundle all these things into a single web, website care plan of some sort and offer it to your, to your clients. In my business, we have a minimum uh, $225 a month maintenance plan that involves a few of these services. And uh, we want them to sign up for those. We, and we, 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 we press them on how important it is to have that. Now, if somebody doesn't want to do that, we have higher ones if they want to go be more extensive. But if someone doesn't want to do that at all, we tell them that's totally fine. Um, if you ever have a problem, we still want to work with you and we still want to maintain the relationship. But the difference now is that if you come to us later and there's an issue with the site, then we charge an engagement fee. An engagement fee is a fee just for us to look at the problem. It's, it's, it's pays for the time to listen to what your problem is, maybe evaluate your website and come up with a solution. Then there's another fee for you to actually get it implemented and get it taken care of. Now, if you're on a care plan, you don't have to worry about those fees at all. You just tell us what the issue is and we take care of it. And sometimes we can preempt that issue before it even happens, okay? <clears throat> all right, then uh, a few more things here, just uh, how to gain clients. This is how I did it. And this is how uh, I built my, uh, my network of clients. So we have something in the neighborhood of over 320 clients. Uh, that we work with and they're all over the world and also locally here uh, where I live in, uh, in California. But I did it through a personal referral network. I'm a part of a uh, referral network out here that I've been a part of for about 10 years called uh, Business Networking International. And what it is, is uh, it's an organization. They're, they're worldwide, but they have local chapters. And that organization they only allow one uh, profession per category. So in my group, there's about 30 of us, I'm the only web person that's there and no other web person can actually join. So once you occupy that position, it's yours for as long as you keep yourself active in the group. I recommend everybody have, if you're in business, have one of these because I get these personal referrals from the people in the group and I get to train them every week on what types of clients I'm looking for, okay? The second one is gonna be your website. So my website is where I put all the examples of my work. It's also why I put all the information on how to work, how to work with me. I also put what the budget is so, we, so that everybody, so that when somebody goes to my website and they're thinking about hiring me, they can see the required budget and they can filter themselves in or filter themselves out. It also has my testimonials uh, and my portfolio. And then the last one is being a subject matter expert uh, on, your, on your work, on your content. So I did a lot of presentations. Uh, I did a few uh, seminars. And actually, last week, I just did a social media training for local businesses. And there's a lot of business that comes from that. But it basically establishes you as an authority. And when you have that establishment, people then come to you. And uh, they want you to solve their problems. And then you can provide solutions uh, for them. So this is the, these are the three ways that I've built my business. It's the way that I... I still do it uh, till this day, and we're in a, we're very fortunate and very blessed that people uh, find us and uh, request services, and we get a lot of referral work. 
All right. Lastly, uh, never stop learning and improving. So you want to always be improving your skills. Even though I don't uh, personally build very many of the websites anymore, I still build some, but not very many. Uh, I still keep my skills sharp. I keep my ear to the to the web so that I know what the latest things are and so I can present those as solutions to my clients. And I'm always improving my systems and always improving the business. So uh, making connections and doing all those great things will help you have a sustainable business. And with that, that is the end of my presentation. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. But I'm going to turn it back over to you, David. You just tell me what you want me to do. All right. I, I think you're right. We'll take, we'll, we will take questions. Got a business expert here. Is there a format to how we ask the questions or we just start uh, talking? Actually, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> a good question. How do we ask questions? Well, the, uh, let's see. Um, if just I ask. Put it into gallery. Yeah, we could we could do that. Or you know what? If you want to, oh, do, you can you raise want, your hand. You raise your hand. That's what I was just going to say. How you know how to raise your hand? Uh, I'll figure it out in a second. It is reactions at the bottom. You click reactions, and there'll be a raise hand button. Yeah, the reaction. I think I just clapped actually. <laughs> that, that'll work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that'll it. That'll work. Go ahead there, uh, uh, Tino. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is more of a technical question and I'll come back around because I wrote down a couple of them but this is the first that popped in my head as far as when you were saying well I primarily do web hosting um I that's just better for me but I you know friends and family and I, I just got started like a year ago but I'm, I have a, okay. come from a programming background okay um but friends and family will ask me to build sites for them and now it's like okay I shouldn't say no I should figure out how much this is going to cost and, and you know go ahead and explore that and I've been using Elementor but as I get into like my performance testing, I'm kind of leaning in and trying to find another direction. Is there a reason you picked Cadence over maybe like Elementor or something like that? Because I'm just running into different things. It's great with the designs, but getting the right speed and performance, I'm, I'm running into a bit of trouble. Oh yeah, this is a great, this is a great question, Tina. Yeah. So yeah. I actually used to build websites up until recently. We used to build websites with Beaver Builder and some Elementor. And when Gutenberg came out, we were vehemently against Gutenberg. <laughs> we just felt like it just wasn't up to par. You couldn't create anything worthwhile and it was a pain. It like doubled our implementation time to create anything in it. However, we couldn't ignore the performance improvements, right? Because it's native in, in WordPress. And I'm talking about using Gutenberg that ships with WordPress, not the, not the plugin. So we don't uh -huh. use that. Well, when Cadence came out, um, when Cadence came out with their uh, Gutenberg blocks, and, and prior to that, there was ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg from, uh, from the guys at Astra, Brainstorm, uh -huh. Brainstorm Force. But when Cadence came out, Cadence was the closest thing to a page builder um, that we could use to build a, a websites similar to the designs that we like and the layouts that we like and, and actually had the performance. Uh, Elementor didn't have it. Elementor was horrible on performance. Beaver Builder was a little bit better, but not, not so much more uh, better. And uh, Cadence, uh, somehow they figured out to, how to create a cross between uh, Elementor and actually I would say they're closer to Elementor and Beaver Builder, the mm -hmm. way they have their, their stuff laid out. So we, so we really liked it. I, I really liked it a lot and I dived uh, full in. So our projects now are built in Cadence and Gutenberg. And there's almost nothing you cannot do in Cadence uh, or an Elementor or in Beaver Builder that you can't do with Cadence and Gutenberg. It's just, it's just not nothing at all. You can actually, and you'll get better, you'll get better performance. And of course there are additional performance things you can do on the hosting yeah. side. Yeah. That just makes it even that much more better, much, much more stuff you have to overcome, you, you, much less things you have to overcome in terms of improving your performance. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for that question. Can I, can I uh, add a, add a follow-up onto that? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not uncommon to see in the YouTube tutorials, not, not yours, but, <laughs> you know, people show performance 
um, results from, you know, a, a simple cadence built site with very high Google page. Speed. I mean, I look at Google page speed insights now because I figured that's what Google Google is using as yeah. part of their search algorithm. That's now a ranking factor. And so, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, do you really believe it? Cause it shows like, you know, I get this result of like a first contentful paint of like four seconds or something. And it's like, it's not taking that long. Well, regardless of whether you believe the result or not, it's what Google's using for the ranking yeah. factor. So it's the thing that I look, that I look at, you know? Um, but you know, I, I don't, I often don't, I, I often find with a native cadence site, cadence theme, cadence blocks, I can, uh, not unusual, as long as I've got um, images sized reasonably, you know, I can get uh, desktop scores that are in the high 90s. Yeah. Okay? But it's really hard to get the mobile score above 90. Yeah. And and even even with these fast tools, and, 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 and I agree, I mean, I, mean I, I think you're not the only one who's promoting that cadence is probably the, the king of the hill and you know generate press is up there and generate press is really good too bloxy and, and astra are all pretty darn fast and you know it seems at the moment that cadence seems to be in the lead but you know by a fraction um but what do you do to get that mobile score what i mean uh, you know there's uh um for me the site ground optimizer has a bunch of stuff yes I've been meaning to go through this. I, I found a tutorial on a very recent one because they've made some changes to SiteGround Optimizer yes. in, recently. Um, but there's other there's other there are other things. Do you ever use Asset Cleanup or um, what's the other one? Perf Matters. Perf Matters exactly. Perf exactly. Matters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Th those are all great tools. Do you do any of those? Yeah. Uh, I do. I also uh, you had mentioned SiteGround, so we also utilize uh, SiteGround. SiteGround has made a lot of uh, improvements in terms of helping you to be able to get uh, better speeds. They've, and I think they're beta testing a CDN now uh, as well to help. But uh, some of the things that I do, one, all my images are, are WebP. So everything's a lot smaller. Um, and then I also, um, I also make sure that I don't have any, I, our, our installs are completely lean. So anything that doesn't need to be there will not be there. Uh -huh. um, including those, uh, those default themes. We're very surprised at how some of that was actually impacting uh, speed. And then also, you also have to kind of look at your design as well. I mean, we used to, we used to do the big images in the front and we still do them in, in sometimes. Uh, or slides or background sliders. We've taken all those out. Uh, minimize as many animations as possible. Uh, definitely, definitely use caching. Um, a lot of caching uh, work. Either you're using WP Rocket, but now SiteGround also has some good caching things as well that if you implement, will actually speed up your site. So, and I think other hosts are starting to implement those things as well. But what we found is once we implement the caching, once we clean up our images, and once we kind of tweak our designs uh, a little bit better, uh, our speeds are actually pretty good. Now, on the mobile side of things, you're right. It's, it's tough to get mobile in that, in that range, especially if you're building a real site with a lot of, a lot of content and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just do it to the best of our, of our ability, and then we just keep uh, tweaking as much as we can. But it's not the speed is not so detrimental, uh, we found. We also do search engine optimization where speed is very important and we're still able to get our sites to rank very well and, and mm -hmm. do well and, and come up with pretty good speeds. So we can get on the mobile side between 70 and 80 on the mobile okay. side if okay. you optimize really well. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad to hear that. Yeah. That's where, you know, I mean, you can pull your hair out over this stuff. And, yeah, uh, I can at least. <laughs> and, I know we have and, a hand up, but I do want to make a comment about. Uh, go uh, ahead. Optima, uh, like GT metrics and all these sites, because I've been testing stuff a lot this week, and I do understand why it's being used. But it's such. To me, it's like halfway, like, like, I don't know, a bait and switch or like smoke it and is. mirrors. <laughs> like I, I, I pulled up a friend's site. He's had a business for a while. 
it literally loaded in the blink of an eye on mobile. And I've never went to his site before. So there's no caching, there's no nothing. I maybe went to his site like a decade ago. Loaded in the blink of an eye on my phone and on my computer. Yeah. It got like an E. <laughs> I got like a like a 35 or something like that yeah. on GT metrics. And this thing loaded in a snap. <laughs> no, you're right. You know, the, the tools are not perfect. And sometimes a lot of people don't realize a lot of times they're they're wrong. <laughs> They're not, you know, they're not, they're not right. So it's good it's, marketing. It's, it's good marketing. It is. And that's why you have to use a kind of a, a balance of good common sense and, and also look at those things as well. So we optimize for speed as much as we can. There's only so much, there's only so far you can go. And then after that, you just have to let, leave the site alone. Let it be. Most of the time when you pull up that site on your, on your mobile phone, it will load very quickly. You pull it over yeah. on the site. You know, I've had clients say, oh, uh, how is our GT metric score? And I, well, I always tell them, well, why don't you just go to your website and take a look at it? Is it okay? Is it loading? Yes, it is. How, how long did it take? Oh, it took under a second. Okay, great. Uh, what about in search? Are you losing any kind of rankings or anything like that? I said, no, we're doing fine. I said, then stop looking at those tools. Um, your site's doing just fine. And, and sometimes it really is a problem and you have to address it. So just a balance of, of both. I see Darcy yeah, I, has her hand up. Darcy Pierce. Hi, Darcy. You're muted. I can't hear you. I know you're talking. Oh, I can't hear okay. you. Okay. Oh, there you Am are. Am I unmuted now? Okay. Hi. Right. Um, so my question for you is uh, related to clients that you meet who then want other stuff too. So I find like I have um, like I'm working on a site right now for a uh, woman who wants, you know, Gmail as part of her company, you know, deal. And she, you know, so here I'm now not doing WordPress anymore. And I've like segued into this whole other, you know, Google workspace and, and, and all of that. And I'm wondering how much of that do you end up finding lands in your lap? And then how do you adjust your pricing to accommodate that? Oh, great question. We actually get that a lot. So much so that we have, we created a product around it. And it's, it's our online branding product. So what we discovered was a lot of clients, they want to get Google Workspace. They want to... Um, they want to have a, a better domain. They want to, uh, sometimes they want you to do some things on their, so maybe make their social media sort of match their website and think these little things like that. So when somebody starts talking, oh, can you set up our Gmail? Can you say, oh, you know what? We have a branding product that you should take advantage of and it includes that service. Would you like it? And they usually will say yes. And you just attach your price to it. Um, we have, we have branding work that ranges from 500 bucks to as high as $5,000, just depends. But inside of there are all these little knickknacky things that people ask for sometimes. We've had integrations with Pavly Connect or integrations with, uh, with their CRM and things like that that are not necessarily website building. And so we put it in there as an add-on. Okay. Yeah, you probably want to spend, if you're getting that, you probably want to spend, the Google Workspace one, definitely. You probably want to spend some time thinking, well, how, how much would you like to charge for that service? So that as soon as it comes out of their, that comes out as a request, you just say, well, here's, that's, that's a different service. Here's the pricing for that. So is that thing like logo work? Yeah, like logo Photo work. Photography. <laughs> Photography. I mean, well, we I'm don't do all of that. <laughs> all of that. Yeah. We don't do photography, but um, yeah, we've had people, we get, you get this one a lot. Yeah. Do you make logos? Right. Mm -hmm. So do you design logos? And we used to say, we say no to that business for a long time, but um, we started saying yes to it, but it's part of our branding offer. So if you want to, if you want a logo, then you have to get the branding package and then it has all these other extra benefits as well. Okay, so does that also include a domain name or domain registration or hosting, or is that part of your web business? So typically with domain names, we always recommend that the client register their own domain uh, or if they need us to do it, 
um, if they need us to register the domain and they want us to manage that, then that falls into our webmaster maintenance or web webmaster care plan. So I do have a, a few select clients who are like, I don't want to have anything to do with any of this technical stuff. How about I just pay you and whatever your maintenance and management is for that and you take care of it. We do have some people like that and that will fall into a webmaster care plan. So we'll register the domain. We will um, we'll set up the hosting, all that stuff. And then we just oh. charge them. How extensive do you do the SEO piece? Because that's also kind of a big deal. That Very big is that deal. a separate thing too? That's a separate thing too. Yeah, it has its own uh, its own services, its own product, and so when when so you can hire when you get hire us for web design, we're doing web design, and then if you then say, oh, we also want to do SEO, we give you a whole new proposal just for SEO work. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Interesting. But I mean, the basic SEO usually does come in your web design. So how do you separate that? Oh yeah, great question. So uh, in my in my web design, there is the, the development of the website, all your functionality and all that great stuff. And I have a product in there called Initial SEO. So Initial SEO is optimization, on-page optimization of your content, so all that creating a sitemap uh, for you, submitting it, doing the submissions to uh, Google, doing all your title tags, meta tags, and all that stuff. So that is actually attached to the initial web proposal. The client can actually detach that. So they can say, I just want a website, but I don't want that initial SEO stuff. And that will, that will reduce the price. Um, but if they, most of the time they want it because they don't, they want their website to actually show up. So we can, you can do initial SEO work. Ongoing SEO work is completely different because yes, with ongoing <laughs> SEO work, yeah, you're doing other stuff now. You're building backlinks. You're creating, you may be creating some, uh, some content uh, uh, there uh, for them. You're doing custom signals uh, if possible and maybe interfacing with Google My Business, doing um, naps, you know, name, address, and, and phone citations. You're doing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's going to have a monthly cost. Okay. Uh, monthly investment. Yeah. <laughs> monthly investment. Yeah. How do you charge for that? Can I ask, or is that Absolute, private information? Yeah, guys, you can ask me anything. You can ask me what I charge. You can ask me, you know, how I, how I set up my products. Happy to share. Okay. So how do I charge? Um, I productize my service. So I have web design, the, my, um, the basic web design without any initial SEO is $5,000. If you include initial SEO, it's an additional $2,500, so $7,500. Most of our projects come in at $7,500, okay? Now, there's a bunch of stuff included in that. I'm just simplifying it, but it has to do with uh, the discovery that we do, building out the website itself, all their revisions and stuff like that. So a good... Uh, initial come in amount will be about $7,500. Webmaster care plan starts at $225. We have one that's $1,695. So $1,695 a month. That puts a webmaster at your disposal and they will do content updates for you. They will update the website, do backups, do security. Your hosting is also included um, in there as well. And we have a restoration guarantee. So if you ever if we ever lose your website, we'll restore it with no additional costs. Okay. And then we have one that is even more expensive than that. It's a $5,000 webmaster uh, product that includes all your search engine optimization, maintenance of your website. At that point, we basically work for you. And we will even build things like uh, sales funnels and landing pages and things like that for you up, up to a certain extent. So, and we have clients in every single one of those ranges. Uh, now, if someone just wants SEO work, it's going to depend on the, uh, the niche, how competitive uh, that niche is, and how much time we have to put in. So our SEO work is going to range from $150 an hour to as high as $200 an hour, just depend on, depends on the, on the product. But SEO will range between $3,500 a month, and it can go as high as $10,000, $15,000 a month, depending on the size of the company. 
and what they're doing. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. I give a lot away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I used to do that too. <laughs> but you have to realize, you know, a website is always going to be for a business. A website is always going to be a, uh, a profitable proposition. They will make more from that website than they ever invest in it. And I've proven it every single time. Okay. Now they might not make the money back in the first month. They might not even make it in the first year, but over time, that website, people get business from a website, either because of the website or through the website. Okay. That because of the website part is very, very important. And I'll tell you why. I had a client who we built a website for. He, uh, he does, you ever watch the show CSI? Mm -hmm. Okay. He builds those little machines that analyze all the DNA and stuff. Very, wow. very niche, obscure <laughs> type of mm. type of product we built a ten thousand um, dollar website for them and we were talking to them about search engine optimization and he kept telling me he kept saying well my stuff is so niche i don't think anybody looks for this stuff i don't think i don't think we're gonna get uh business that way and he was right for like two years then not a single inquiry submission phone call or anything okay and he's paying us for maintenance on, on the website. Well, at the third year, right, within, within the third year, he gets this huge government contract, $56 million oh my <laughs> from my little $10,000 website. And he tells that story. So I love sending my referrals to him uh, or my potential clients there. Cause he tells that story and he says, yeah, for two years, nothing really happened. Now I have more business than I can handle. And I have a lot of different stories like that, but I've never in my entire, in my entire profession, I've never built a website where the client paid, the client lost money on the website. They may not have made the money immediately, but over time they have made that money back. And a lot, every single one of them will tell you, oh yeah, we made more than that uh, back. You know, and of course, the more you put into your website, you know, the more marketing you do, you're going to make that money. You're going to make it back. So have 100% full confidence in your pricing, because I guarantee you, no matter what you charge, you're undercharging. Yeah, you're well, undercharging. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Anyone else have a question? You can ask me about anything. Yeah, Tino's back. Tino's, Tino's yep, back. Yep, yep. What's yep. up, Tino? Um, so when you and when I know just based on the network of people I'm currently in, like, you know, twenty five hundred dollars, five thousand dollars is currently out of their ballpark within because it's it's often people who like I got a call. And like I said, it, I was trying to stick to just web hosting, but people come to me more about web design because most people don't even know what web hosting is. They just think there's a website. Yeah. So <laughs> it's often people who they're starting a business. These aren't existing businesses. It'll be like someone referred to me today, said, hey, Tino, I saw on your social media that you're doing websites. I think my sister needs some help. So I talked to her and she does something in psychology and she has a private practice that she does as well uh, around that so she's just she's just getting started okay you know what I mean is that just is that just part of the process you know what I mean as far as growing within your own network or like how do you how do you make that leap it's just getting out there and, and meeting people who are in those brackets attempting to build bigger sites and have a bigger budget to do more or is it just, you know what I mean Yes. I, I didn't phrase that question well, but I'm hoping it came across. No, I, I understand exactly what you're asking because I've yeah. I've been in your exact same uh, position. I didn't start with hosting, but I understand what you're what you're asking. So let me. When I my first website that I built when I when I first got into building websites for profit for money, um, the first 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I was going to build a WordPress website. So for a programmer and a, a person that does uh, HTML and CSS and all that, WordPress is very easy. Okay. I get it. I see the PHP files. I understand how it works. And I just thought, this is so easy. I couldn't possibly charge a ton of money for this mm -hmm. because they could just go in there. You know, they could get a host and one click install and install a theme. And there's even a website called Theme Forest where they can just buy a theme for 59 bucks and have a full blown website. <laughs> right. So, when uh, a friend of mine told me, okay, my church needs a website, the pastor's willing to pay you. And I said, okay, um, I'll do it for, and before I could even say a price, I was actually going to say a very low price. He was like, he'll pay you uh, 300 bucks. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And then he came back and he said, he's so excited about that $300. He wants you to build five websites for him. And I said, well, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> five websites for 300 bucks a piece. And I was excited because that's why that's 1500 bucks. I said, this is great. I could do this all day until I started building the websites. <laughs> and, and then he started having requests and demands and time and all that. And then I realized I was undercharging. So I wouldn't talk to people who are doing this for a living. And that's, how, that's where I got a lot of my pricing from. And my work was very good. So as a matter of fact, the guy that I was talking to, he was in Walnut Creek. He was like, you're you're making, you're going to make it hard for us because it's not like you're building low quality stuff. You're building like full blown good stuff. And I'm charging 8,000. You're charging 300. <laughs> he said, that's, that's not going to be good. And you're not going to be able to sustain that. Okay. So with that, with that being said, when you get those types of, uh, there, there's a reason you get those types of, um, those requests. And a lot of it actually has to do with the, with the fact that, a lot of people are really looking for you to help them out, you help them get yeah. started. Okay. Yeah. And when you're in starting phase, you don't really have a lot of, um, of resources. The thing that you, the thing that I started doing was I started saying to myself, everybody can afford my price. Okay. The question is, how do I want them to pay for that price? So let's say somebody has in their head, I want to pay $500 for a website or $400 for a website. And they came to me. I don't tell them, well, you're below my price range and I'm not going to waste my time with you. So go find somebody else. What I tell them is I said, you know, that's a, that's an unreasonable price for the type of work that I do for, if you really want something quality, that's going to help you in your business, you really don't want to pay $400 for it. And if you do pay $400 for it, you really don't want to tell people that you did that because it just makes your business look low quality. So what I tell them is, why don't you make a good investment into your website and let's, let me work it out for you. So what can you afford? I can afford $400. Okay. I charge $4,000. So can you do $400 10 times? Can you do it over 10 months? Because then I can really build you something that's amazing. That's going to help your business. And that way they'll, they'll think about it. And if they can do $400 once they have a gap to get to get the other $400 and actually built a lot of my business early on that way where I offered a, a payment plan that allowed him to do it. And soon I willed that down to pay half up front uh, and then half later. And then later on, I got to a point where now people pay full price up front. Okay. So as you're, and then you start, it makes you start presenting your service for what it's worth without downgrading the, the, the value of it. And so when somebody comes to you next time and you say, okay, my, my, my websites are $4,000 then they, a lot of times you start getting this. Okay, how do I pay you? Do you take it all up front? Do you take it uh, uh, half now, half later? And, and then you want to start reducing that, the time frame for you to get paid. Okay. Does that help? Yep. Okay. Uh, if no one else has a question, I do have a follow-up. But if someone else has a question, go ahead and... Oh, go ahead, me. Tino. Go ahead, oh, okay. Tino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a follow-up to it too, but I'll follow <laughs> up on yours. <laughs> uh, one thing that, I, that I've been attempting to do is um, kind of get certain people, like if they didn't like whatever price I was saying, because um, I kind of have like a little cookie cutter site that I pre, a series of sites that I pre-built that are like one page sites, except for maybe like a scheduling page a second, they're like around 500 bucks or whatever. And so you can just kind of say, I want that. And I barely have to change anything and you have your site. Um, 
but some people they don't even want to spend 500 to a thousand dollars and i'll tell them well you can just buy the hosting and i can give you some coaching and you pay for an install of a template and then you can kind of and i coach them through it like am i giving too much away like that because then at that point they're kind of paying for consulting rather than me actually like building the site for them well um, it, it, it's going to depend on what value you're getting from that so there, I have two thoughts on that. One uh -huh. is, yes, that's good. And that's, that's, that's something that you can do if, if it's worth your time. Uh -huh. But there is something to be said on focusing on this one thing that you do, right? Uh -huh. Not everyone's going to be able to hire you. That's just a reality. You could charge $2 for a site and somebody will still find it too expensive. Right. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to, you want, that's why I say you want to define your customer. Part of defining your customer is that they can afford the services that you have to provide. And by afford it, I don't mean that they have the money. They have the, re, they have, they're resourceful enough to get the money. When somebody says they want to start a business, okay, it's amazing. A lot of people can say, I want to start a business. They have no money, but Within a week or two weeks, they have a full-blown office that they signed a lease for, right? They've got the trucks in place. Somehow they know how to raise the money. But the, the, this portion of it, this web portion of it, for a lot of people, it's such a, it's not a high enough priority until it becomes one, right? So I have right. an interior designer who, um, wanted, who started her interior design business two months ago. She knew I built websites. So she came to me and was kind of getting you know, pricing, you know, what, what would it take? And I told her before I even, before you even go out there and start talking to people, I would get the web part done first. And she said, well, I'm getting a lot of clients right now. So this is just something to showcase my work. Well, she called me like a day later, frantic, needing a website yesterday because she now has this big client who won't do business with a business that doesn't have a website. <laughs> Right. So they're, they're asking her, where's your website? And now she's stalling. So it, it is very, very important, but you want to make sure that you are setting a standard. Okay. So, you know, this is what I do. And you have to look at it like, a, like, you know, if you sell, let's say you sell cups. Okay. I sell cups. So you come to me if you want a cup, but if you want a car, I'm not going to put my cups aside and get a car for you because now I'm doing something totally different. It might not benefit me. So I sell websites. I sell them at this price. This is the value that I offer. And if you want my value, then let's exchange value and let's figure out a way to work within that. But if you're, if, if it's not a good fit for you, then that's totally fine. Okay. There are plenty of other places that you can go and get exactly what you need. Here's what you'll find. You'll make more money. You will have more time, <laughs> right? Cause you won't waste a lot of time doing different things. And you'll be, you'll be laser focused and you'll actually get more business uh, because you start attracting the right, you start attracting the right client because that's exactly what you're focused on. Does that help? Oh, yeah, immensely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. And, and then Ron, did you have a question? Where's Ron? I do. Hey, Clifton, uh, quick question for you. Actually, yeah. oh, nice. one is um, how many websites do you build in a, or how many websites does your company build in a year? And how much money do you make off the, the YouTube channel? By the way, you do a really great job on the YouTube channel. Thank you. One on, um, on magazine, the WP Cadence, the Cadence WP magazine one. And uh, I thought, okay, it's going to be two and a half hours. Really? Am I going to ever survive that? You did a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very well. All right. So question, uh, how many websites? So we do about 100 websites a year. Okay. So about a hundred websites a year. Um, last year we were closer to about 150 wow. uh, full-blown projects. Now that's website builds. We also do other things as well, but if we're just looking at strictly the website, uh, the website lane, it's roughly between 100, 150 a year okay. of websites for um, YouTube, for my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel, I just got monetized and it is currently earning about 320 bucks a month uh, in revenue. So I'm pretty excited about that because that was just really a side thing. 
that I was doing to just get my education outlet out. And um, yeah, it, it's bring, it's profitable. So it's, <laughs> it's good for me. I'm and, and that, that YouTube channel, I'm going to grow it immensely. So I have a slew of stuff coming up uh, for it. I'm making room in my business so that I can make more videos and uh, still have my business still run. So you, you do a great job and yeah, you thank you the most anal person I've ever come across <laughs> online. <laughs> really, he's going to go over and show with this little space that's missing. Yes. <laughs> I want, you know, my philosophy is, because I know what it's like. I, I assume that the person who's going to be watching this video knows nothing. They don't know these little things. And so, and, and sometimes before I put out a video, if I forgot, if I, if I realized, oh man, I don't think they're going to make this connection. I'll just do the whole video over <laughs> again. But um, I, I really want people to, to get it because I think once you get really good at, this is, this is a very highly marketable, high ticket skill. If you can get good at this, you can do almost anything. Uh, the, the web is its own planet now and people are looking to build. They're looking to, they need, they need people that can build things for them. So it's, it's why I want to teach people how to do it. Great job. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Darcy, did you have another question? Your hand is still up. I don't know. If yeah, you know. I do have one more okay. question. Sure. Um, so I don't know if you have the challenges of the client that doesn't provide the content that you need to build their site. So I was, you know, thinking about your client that had the really weird product. So yeah. I have a lot of those for some reason. Um, I have a client that, um, does caulking for big buildings okay. and all their products that go along with those, you know, um, with that business. So how, what do you have a format or some kind of deadline put into your contracts or something like where you get that information out of them? Because I have challenges with that. Yes. So it's very, it's very simple for us. Fulfillment of the project does not require content. Yeah. Once, once the project, once the, um, once we've built out your site, if you have not provided all your content by the time we're done and our projects are about six, eight weeks. So by the time we're done, if we don't have the content, the, the balance is still due. And even after you've paid the balance, if we go over that six weeks, there's additional billing. So we're very clear about that in the very beginning because you can, you can get stuck in a project that way. So typically the way it goes is um, we're going to start. So you hire us. We're going to start building. We're going to start putting things together. You have six weeks to provide your content. So we send you a site map. We even send you a questionnaire that helps you kind of create your content if you're doing it yourself. You can also hire us to create the content for you. So if you answer that questionnaire, we'll hire a content writer to write out your content, which is how I prefer to do it. Uh, I don't leave it up to my clients to write their own content anymore, but some, some, some do insist on doing that. So we just make it clear that uh, one, if you're doing it on a payment thing, so the most we will do is in two payments. The first payment is due when we start the project. The second payment is due in four weeks, regardless of where we are in the project. So in four weeks, your card is gonna get automatically billed. And then we will continue the project for another six to eight weeks. After the eighth week, if we are not completed with the project and it's because you haven't supplied us with what we need, every week after that, there is a fee for any additional work that we do. And we just don't have any problems with content ever since we implemented that policy. <laughs> I can understand why. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. I mean, you have to be, we're willing to walk away from projects if they don't agree to the terms, right? So we, we were very clear, like, okay, you agreed to this and we just go over it. You're not, you know, there's a, there's this part of my contract that says that, you know, payments are not to be delayed due to lack of content. And they, and they have to agree to that. You know, this, they have an initial part. They have to initial that. So that the, the payment, and then we also, we do it in reverse. If, um, if we don't get that 
payment that set is so if we divided it some our payments either pay in full or they pay in two if that four week payment doesn't come in at that point we stop uh, we stop everything on the project we don't do anything more until that payment comes in and when we get that payment then we then we proceed from then on yeah okay thanks mm -hmm. all right anybody else before i ask <laughs> Um, uh, I can talk again. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Um, I did get a request like for someone to build like a from someone to build a like a, a online store type of website. Like which tools? Because I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not a huge fan of since I do the hosting myself of hosting online stores. To be honest with you, okay. I just think there's like so many things that can go wrong. But like, what tools would you suggest, or what would you suggest for doing that type of project? They're, they're going to be selling like ten. They they're selling clothes. Well, the best tool that I've found to use for online stores is WooCommerce. Uh, WooCommerce can be very uh, simple, but it can also be very complex depending on how you want your online store to run. So I use WooCommerce because it's the most supported one. Um, out there. Um, it, it really depends on how they want to sell. If, I mean, if you're looking for a cart and things like that, then yeah, then, I, then yeah, WooCommerce. If they're just looking to sell a few things, there are things that you can do with form plugins where they can look like a, look like a, a, a store. There's Studio Cart, which is a, um, a standalone sales plugin. You can sell individual products or you could sell uh, events and things like that. So it just really depends. But WooCommerce is our go-to for, for stores. Cool. Yeah. All right, I promise no more questions. That's no, okay. Uh, if you have more, you can ask. That's fine. One, one thing I do want to, I do want to clarify, uh, and if I haven't said it already, whenever you're working with a client on anything, so because uh, we were talking about Google Workspace at one point, and we were talking about domains and things like that. Hosting is another one. You always want to make sure that the um, that there is a some kind of agreement there that's actually in the best interest of the client. So let me give a, give a good example. When a client tells me, so I have those clients who say we don't want to deal with this stuff. We don't want to deal with. So we have all their information. We have their passwords for their Google. We have their passwords for their domain, their GoDaddy, all this stuff. We manage the whole thing. But we also have a contract that actually it's, it, it gives them full ownership and the right to request all that information from us. That kind of holds us accountable for holding their stuff. Now, in return for that contract, we charge a high premium because they don't want to have hold on to their own stuff and they're happy to pay it. So this is a really cool tactic to uh, provide some peace of mind for your client. So number one, they always get a, a key file that has all their logins and all their passwords and everything like that. And if it's something that we've purchased uh, for them, then we also give them this little certificate that says that they're the actual rightful owner of, you know, XYZ domain or this account or whatever it is. And we're just, a, we're just the administrator on that account. We're not the owners of it. Very important. I have a question. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, can you tell more about how you go from the, like a client first getting in touch with you through your website possibly? And how do you go about vetting them? And then how do you go through the whole website proposal agreement part? Do you do everything electronically? Like when they sign the terms, is there a software they use? And when you set up the payments and reoccurring payments, is there a particular software you use to implement all that? Yes. Every, yeah, we do everything virtually if, if we can. Uh, I do meet with some, some clients in person, just it really depends. Um, but you, you're asking what's the process from when they, when they first request all the way to actually getting a, a contract going and everything, right? Yeah, to, to, the part I have trouble with is everything up to actually building. 
building. Okay. So, so like, everything you know, before like, that. <laughs> yeah. Like getting it all situated where there's terms and agreements and everyone's on board and the timeline. Sure. So, like being so, organized. So um, we have, when, when we first, when a client first reaches out, we actually have a website questionnaire, a website brief. There is a, a form version of that on our site, but we also do a discovery in person. When I'm talking to a client, there are three things that I want to know. And I asked I ask about them in this order. Okay, The order is very important so that you don't waste your time. One, budget. If a client uh, is, wants to work with us, I have to know if they can afford the service. If they, There's no point in talking to them about anything else if they really can't afford it. So now, Because then they would just get very excited and then there's a big letdown at the end when they find out that their website is going to cost them a million dollars. So, <laughs> so we want to make sure that they have the budget up front. Okay. Um, once you do that, uh, and the way I always handle that is, okay, I want to talk about the most awkward part of this conversation first. And usually that gets a laugh out of everybody. So this is going to be very awkward, but I got to know if you guys have any money. Okay. <laughs> so they, and then I, and then we now talk about budget. Okay. And then once, once they once I've established that they have the budget, then we can now start talking about the requirements. So what do, you know? Why are you building this website? What is it for? Uh, what are you hoping to get out of it? Okay. So the, so the second the second portion of it uh, that I ask is, you know, uh, actually what I said. Why do why are you building a website? What do you want the website for? And this is this will give me all the things that they need, and I start formulating in my head what I would need to build out this website. The third question is the most important question. And the question I ask them is, if I build this website and this website does everything that you want it to do and it's, it's a successful website, what does that actually look like? What does that mean in your company? And they'll tell me. So I may have a real estate agent say, well, it means that we're getting three to four leads each month, or it means that I look more professional online, or it means that my clients can actually search for properties uh, on the website and I'm providing a good customer service. Some of them have financial goals. You know, it means that we're making 200 grand a year from our website, from the leads coming from our website. Those are very, very important answers because if somebody tells me, well, let's just say that it's making a hundred thousand dollars a year for me from, because I'm getting X amount of clients. Now I know, okay, a website just by itself isn't going to do that. Um, but if they did some marketing, that would help. So I can actually craft a custom solution. I can say, okay, you want to make a hundred grand. Here are the things that we have to do. Here are the three things that we have to do in order for you to get to that goal. And I can now provide a solution. And most of the time, if you can match the solution to their goal, they'll hire you um, because they want to, they're going to hold you to that. And then you, if you, if you do it right, you're showing them you're providing them something that's going to help them do that. Okay. So once they've decided to move forward, the very next step is an invoice and an agreement. Okay. Uh, I use hello sign for my agreement so they can sign the sign it digitally and there's no friction there. I just, I have a, uh, I have an agreement. That's a pretty standard one for my company that I've created. It has all the hits, all the points. And I just modify it depending on the client and depending on the project because people's solutions are different. I send it off on hello sign and I let them know in the hello sign because I send that first. I let them know that there is an invoice following immediately. So it's either a one-time payment invoice or a split invoice. And I also let them know we will start the project as soon as both these items are executed. Once both of those items are executed, then hit up my guys and we're going to start putting together the the hosting the installs the themes the plugins all the solutions whatever those are somebody starts creating a design and then i send them a site map a suggested site map so based on our conversation and discovery i know that you're going to need uh services uh a services main page and then sub sub pages of services i'm going to need the content for those uh services and then you know about you and things like that now, if it's in a situation where they've hired us to do the content, then there's a questionnaire that I send for each content piece. So they just have to answer those questions. I take those questions. I hand it over to my content writer. 
and they do all the writing and sending over and things like that. So that's all completely taken care of. And everything is following according to a timeline. So in about two weeks, they're going to see a design. It's not going to have any content in it. It's just going to be placeholder content. They will approve that design. And then two weeks later, they're going to see the design with the content that we, if they supply their content in time uh, by then, hopefully that they have, they're going to see all that. And then in another two weeks, we're going to be talking about launching the site. Once we launch the website, uh, we're going to test it out, make sure that everything works, make sure that they, they acknowledge that everything works. And then from there, we transition into maintenance and marketing. And then it's just, a, if they're doing maintenance and marketing, it's a month to month thing at that point. If they're not doing that, then we just let them know, hey, we're on hand if you need anything please come to us. We're the ones who built the website. We're going to be the best ones to be able to fix any issues. And then they're, they're kind of going on a pay as you go path from that point on. Uh, do you use like a project management software or anything to help them approve these things? Or is it just through email communication? I use email. I don't use a project management system. I used to use a project management system and there are some really great ones out there but it required my clients to know how to use a project management system and it created more delays uh, than, than help. And we have used the ball, Basecamp and so on. Now, there are some clients who they use a project management system and they want us to plug into that. And we're more than happy to do that. But I found that it just much more faster and efficient uh, to send them the site from my dev server and have them look at it and just come back to me with their raw feedback. And they do. Uh, they appreciate it because everybody can use email. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, do you have them pay you electronically or you accept checks? I mean, how do you handle that part? Most of them pay electronically with a credit card. Uh, some of them want to pay by check and that's totally fine too. So they just mail a check. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. take it. We also accept cash. Yeah. <laughs> always nice. <laughs> yeah. Cash is always nice. We may even give you a little discount if you're going to pay for cash. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, Thank you. This is this is being recorded. So IRS, if you heard that, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what cash? <laughs> what cash? <laughs> yeah. Great question. Anyone else before I go? So 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 Clifton, you you mentioned you know the when I mean, you work with a client who's on a who's coming in at a much lower budget than what you're really expecting and talking about working with them on payments over time and, you know, spreading out the payment instead yeah. of $4,000, maybe, you know, 410 times. Um, do you, how do you, how do you uh, explain the, the value of why is it a $4,000 website? Why isn't it? I mean, what if I went, I mean, there's people I'm that are saying I could, they could do it for me for a thousand. What's, what's, what's different. Do you have a list you go down that you say, well, we're going to do these services? You know, uh, I love this question because I've <laughs> I gotten this question before from a person that said, but I don't understand why you're charging 6,500. But when I talk to this person, they're charging 400. What's the difference? <laughs> and here's, here's the difference. There is... Um, the difference is going to be in the expertise, okay? So you and I both build websites, but the website I'm going to build and the solution I'm going to provide is going to be very different from the one that you provide, okay? And I've valued my service, uh, in, in my belief, fairly according to the time it's going to take. So for us, it takes roughly about 60 to 120 hours to put together a whole project, okay? So... If we're charging six grand, it's about 200 bucks an hour, which is very, very reasonable. Um, if someone's doing it for $400, that's telling me a lot about the person who's doing it for $400. One, they're, they're not valuing the service. But one thing I, the one thing I tell the client is, yes, they will probably build you something. They're just not going to build what I'm going to build. Okay. They just mm -hmm. won't. Because yeah. they, we don't all work for like a web, a web design, overarching web design company that does the same thing. So you, I build custom websites. I'm not building cookie cutter things. And I build them to taste, meaning I'm building it 
exactly to what it what the specifications that you want. And if you can find somebody that can build your what you want to the exact specifications that you want, uh, and they're gonna, you're going to be able to pay 400 bucks or less than what I'm charging, I will highly recommend you go with that person. Absolutely. Uh, because you're going to say it's, it's better for you uh, pricing wise, right? And the price seems to be more important than, than anything. Um, but if you want my my product, if you want what I'm going to build and my service, right? So I have my service. If you want my service, this is the price for my service. Now, my service includes a lot of things. You know, there's consult, there's consultations, there's advice. There is also my, um, my uh, expertise. There's also my experience, right? So I've been in this thing for over 20 years. I've probably seen all the errors and mistakes and and know all the different, know all kinds of different ways. Now, it doesn't mean that I know better than everybody. It just means that I have a certain expertise and the value of that expertise for me, for me to be happy with doing this work and taking the time, the 120 hours is going to be this price. So you have to be able to, you have to stand firm on your price and just recognize that the other person who's going to build whatever they're going to build, they're not going to build what you're going to build. It's going to be completely different. You're not getting the same it's not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. There are many people who have come to me wanting a website, have backed away because of the price, went somewhere else, did it for cheaper, circled all the way back again and came back to me because the service was just not the same. The experience was just not the same. And uh, if you ever sit down with me in a discovery call or a discovery meeting, the, that discovery meeting is so rich with value that when they go to another meeting, they can immediately see the difference. And a lot of times they just come back, <laughs> you know, they, there's just certain questions. So, and it, it does take time to get to that point. Listen, I didn't jump in here charging $5,000 for a website. That took me probably two or three years of building websites at $1,000, $1,500, uh, $2,000, $2,500 before I got to a point where I could see that my the value, I was undervaluing the service, especially when is it the guy that did the $56 million, right? I have tons <laughs> of stories like that. I have realtors, they're selling homes and making tons of money because of the website. And they only pay me once for the website. And I'm not saying I'm entitled to their money. I'm just saying that, that there's value in that virtual business that you're building for them. And you don't want to undervalue it. If you go to an agency, a lot of agencies right now, you know, they charge, they won't, some agents, agencies won't talk to you unless you're prepared to spend 20 grand. And that's just for the design. That's not even to implement the website. That's just for you to get a design to take to a developer to build. And when you look at those websites and you, then you look at what you can do and what you build. Um, yeah, I, I know, <laughs> I know that my pricing is under what they would normally pay for a professionally built website. It just is. It's just the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, Ron, did you have a question? I have like three. I'll, I'll, do <laughs> they're pretty easy. So what would, what tool would you use if cadence went away? You know, if it just disappeared, fell off the planet, what would you use if you didn't have cadence? Okay. Can you rep, you want me just to. Oh, you want me, okay. I can answer. So if cadence went away, I would build my own cadence. No, um, <laughs> if cadence went away, then I would move over to Bloxy um, and maybe combine Bloxy with uh, Stackable. I think Stackable is a close second to, uh, to cadence. Now I do also, we have tested building uh, great looking websites with just strictly Gutenberg, okay. very tough to do, but it's possible. But you have to do a lot of coding and a lot of styling. So, and we have those chops, so we can do it. Um, but if Cadence went away, then that's what we do. I hope they don't go away. Okay. But yeah. Do you ever use the Cadence themes, the little starter, or use them as a, a starting point or anything like that? No, we just, yeah, those themes are great, um, but we like to start from a blank slate. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the default cadence theme is actually very well done. It's 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 a great starting uh, starting point. The problem with templates is that temp. The problem with templates is if you're a custom, if you build things custom, you're actually building according to what you're trying to accomplish. And so those finished products are already built a certain way, and you kind of have to, you almost have to get rid of all that stuff to start over. So. Um, sometimes it might work out if, if it's a perfect fit, but it's, it's rare. It's Let's rare. start with the starting point of the, uh, the content too, correct? Yeah. You got to yeah. get all the content. Yeah. And we, we, I mean, I'll admit, we do get some good ideas because some of those cadence starter templates have great, uh, have great ideas in there. So there's some really good ideas in there that you can kind of pull from to build your own. If you had to choose like three, YouTube channels or blogs that you read or look at, what would they be that you kind of get excited when you're like, wow, there's a new one out there? Oh, oh man. Uh, that's a good question. That you, learn, that you learn things from, obviously. Okay. That's a good question. Um, okay. You said YouTube channels or blogs? Either one. Either yeah. one. Okay. YouTube channels. Um, YouTube channels that I enjoy. There is a gentleman by the name of, oh, I'm forgetting his name. He does WP Tuts. Oh, he I know is, who you're uh, talking about. You, you know guy. him? British guy. Yeah, British yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul C. Paul I was C. watching That's him it. today. Yeah. 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 He's awesome. Yeah. I love his um, I love his channel. Does great stuff. Um, I also like Adam Prizer, although Adam hasn't really been doing much lately but i really enjoyed his stuff earlier on in the day i used to watch him like man i would love to do a youtube channel i just don't have time but he just you know i i liked i liked i learned a lot of about a lot of new things matter of fact i learned about cadence from watching an adam video yeah um and i <laughs> which was funny because i was a hardcore beaver builder fan uh, i still am i still love beaver builder by the way but I was all about Beaver Builder and I saw this and I was like, no, nah, Beaver Builder just does this way better. This is, the, and Gutenberg sucks. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I tried it out and I changed my mind promptly, but uh, Adam is a, would be another one. And then um, who else? Oh, there is a gentleman by the name of uh, Wes, is it Wes Anderson? Uh, I know who you mean. You I know think I know who you mean. He, I'm he, in his Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, he teaches a lot of business um, yeah. use. He used to be a developer. I don't know if he still does it. Um, Wes McDowell, I think it is. Yeah, Wes yeah, McDowell. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched yeah. this stuff too. Yeah, yeah Wes McDowell yeah. is really good. Very, very useful uh, stuff. And I like his stuff because he talks about small business, local businesses um, and stuff. So yeah, so Paul C with uh, WP Tuts. Adam's pretty good and uh, Wes McDowell, I would recommend uh, checking checking those guys out. Now, all three of those guys are big Elementor fans though. So, yeah. and I think Paul C is strictly Elementor. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can I can I add on to that? Um, yeah. um, you know, the, the, a lot of the guys are Elementor or Divi. You know, they tend to use page builders. There's a few people that are kind of mixed. They'll do tutorials on a couple of different things. But Clifton's one of the few who does Cadence and Gutenberg. Um, Jack Chow, um, he yeah. also, we were just talking, Clifton and I were just talking about this last week, but he hasn't done as many videos either. He, I noticed that he's actually doing videos for Rank Math. So I think he may have taken a gig with Rank Math and put his yeah. channel on hold for a while. But his stuff is really good and, and very good for optimizing. He's a really, he's a self-admitted speed junkie. And so he's, he's really into optimizing for speed and stuff. Um, there's a channel that I, there's sometimes there's some channels that aren't necessarily WordPress specific um, that you can get some good ideas from. And there's a channel that I love for design work called flux. Yeah. You ever checked out flux? One. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, uh, the channel's called flux. They actually use, Webflow, and they're big advocates of a platform called Webflow, which is an all-in-one um, uh, CMS, kind of like Wix or a Squarespace. Yeah, you know, uh, but apparently more, much more advanced in terms of its building capabilities. So they're not WordPress guys, uh, but they do really good design stuff. 
they're they're really into the aesthetics and messaging and stuff and they do some videos that are like um you know the, he, he off one of the guys often does um tutorial or um uh, portfolio reviews so he'll take a, a new designer who's got a new website and he'll go through that site and tell it say what he likes about the design and messaging of the site and what he doesn't like about the site um, they even have one that's probably a few months back to go back to our pricing conversation where he had a friend who had a business who was getting proposals on websites and so he got like five, six different proposals from different agencies and the prices were wildly all over the map. Yeah. So it's really interesting because, you know, halfway through it, he's like, mind you, this is the same site they're bidding on, <laughs> you know, because there'd be like one bid, it's like $5,000, another bid's like 20,000. And, uh, you know, I mean, they're just way all over the map. And so it was really, so they do a lot of business stuff and a lot of uh, design kind of stuff so it's that's a really yeah. neat I, I i enjoy that channel yeah 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 pricing pricing is a really fascinating subject in my experience what i found is you'll typically get whatever price you're asking uh somebody will pay it so yeah uh and, and it's just good to kind of know your there is a sweet spot for for pricing in sort of in your energy there's like a sweet spot where you know you'll get that pricing. Uh, if you get a $12,000 client and they pay $12,000 for the site and you do a good job, that client begins to send you other clients that, right. and the expectation is that, you know, they're going to pay $12,000 or more or around that. So the, the thing to think about your pricing is it's not that you're going to gouge people or have ridiculous pricing, but really evaluate what they're asking and compare it to the value that they're going to be getting. Um, you know, you just compare it to the value that they're going to be getting and then give a price that when you are doing the work and you're running into snags and it's not working out, you can think of what you're charging and be happy about it. It's nothing worse than getting a horrible project that you priced poorly and uh, it's, it's more pain than, than what you're being paid for. That's like the yeah. worst. So um, I learned, I, I at one point just got to a point where I just said, yeah, our bottom is $5,000. That is the least because at that price, we can build it. And even if we run into issues, we have enough to, to cover our, our costs and it's totally worth it. And we're happy. We're happy with that. We, we feel like we're being fair. Um, but then, you know, somebody might come and say, I want you to build an e-commerce website for me. And you say, okay, great. That's, that's a 10 grand project. Let's go ahead and take that on. And then you realize that they have 5,000 products that they want you to load up on there. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> you have to, you have to really know the details of your project, really estimate your time that it's going to take and then just charge accordingly, but people will pay whatever price you ask. If, if they, if you can show them that the value they're going to be getting will exceed that price. Cool. Do you have, do you have like two websites that are your that's kind of your calling card. That's like, those are my masters. Those are my Van Goghs, whatever. Oh man, that's, that's and tough. If you, <laughs> and if you have one that is a magazine one, I, I would, I, that would be great too. If you, if you've done one. You know what? I don't have a magazine website. Um, that's from, from a client. Um, I do have a client that has what would be a magazine website, but I didn't build that site. He just hired us on for, uh, maintenance and taking okay. care of the website from somebody else but and i don't have a every time you look at it right hmm? does it pain you every time you look at the website like, it does it does i just shake my head and say you know we could really make this into something for you um, but he's happy with it he's happy with the way that it looks and you know we're happy with 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 maintaining it it's easy to maintain calling card websites oh man that is tough we love all our websites because we're completely biased. Um, 
two websites that are calling card websites. Uh, you know, that's tough. I think one that I would say is Joseph Saba Group. It's a luxury real estate website that we built, uh, built in WordPress. And we built that using Genesis. Um, and then another one that we recently launched is, uh, oh, yeah, we launched a beautiful, uh, oh, should I share my screen and show you? Wait. Sure. Would that, is that okay? So here's oh. one that I would say I we, we built, I was, that we really were very happy with. So this one, this is one of those, um, for you, Darcy, this is one of those, this was a branding and website build that we did. Completely rebranded and rebuilt the site. Let me open this up for you. And this is built with Cadence. Okay, can you see that? Nice. Okay. So... Brown Developments, they do um, life coaching and real estate and career leadership coaching. But this is all built with Cadence. And we have a few animations in there. Very nice. Um, they, it's a husband and wife team. So he does a sales and mentorship portion of the site. And she does the life coaching uh, portion of the site. It's got these really neat, simple uh, pricing tables. And this is her side of the site. So you can see, this is one of the things I love about Cadence and Gutenberg is your site is just going to be very nice and light. And it looks almost simple, um, but it's really easy to put together once you get a design. Uh, once you get a design, it's very simple to put together. Looks great. Yeah, really good. And it, it, yeah. it looks really clean. Yeah, very clean. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing a tutorial right now on another sections tutorial for my, where I'm going to show some of the section work uh, that we did here. Um, these different these different types of sections and, and why we do them that way. Um, and how Cadence just makes it really super simple uh, to put together. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to show you the, the order form. Uh, so we have an order form that looks like this. This is a, that they pay through. And then we have another one. Um, I think it's on the pricing table. So any other pricing tables will take you there. Uh, here as so well. So they actually pay through that form? Yep. Is that Gravity Forms? This is Gravity Forms. Yeah. Yes. Not a very good form to use. So yeah, this one, I, I nice. really love this site. This is it was just a very nice, smooth project. We, we created this logo for them and, uh, and then designed the website based on that. The one that I was telling you about before, so this is a bit of an older website, but it's it's one that a lot of people look at and say, oh, can you build me one like that? <laughs> um, so this is Joseph Saber with um, Joseph Saber Group. Okay. This is built with um, Genesis and uh, Beaver Builder, the famous Beaver Builder. Do you recall why you chose those as the... Um... The tools to build with uh... yes back so when i built this those were the those were the great tools those were the cadence of their days okay. <laughs> right <laughs> cadence didn't exist and gutenberg definitely did not exist uh back then so um this is that's what that was our stack that's what we normally were using was genesis and beaver builder and before beaver builder we were strictly using only um only genesis and uh we were coding our 
we're registering widgets to build out our pages, uh, maybe using Genesis Extender. But, and when Beaver Builder came out, we had kind of the same reaction that we did to Gutenberg. We we're like, oh, page builders, you're not real coders. You guys are cheating. <laughs> it is not, you're not, you're not really doing it. And then when we looked at the business sense of it all and how fast we could put this stuff together with a page builder, then we, then we switched over to, to using page builders at that point. And then just adding our, you know, we do our custom coding behind it still and it works out just fine. So, yeah. Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, so Clifton, how, how do you start the, I, I, I find myself sometimes when I'm starting a new project with what you could call writer's block. Um, design block. You could call it designer's block. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 like you, I'm very particular about the design. Um, I don't want something that's too stock cookie cutter kind of looking, you know, too, too basic. I, um, um, and, you know, you got a blank slate, there's like color choices, there's font choices, there's just lay, general layout, um, you know, so, and, and I go through looking at those starter templates, I often use those as inspiration, rather than actually use them to, as a starting point. Um, by the way, on, on those, regarding those uh, starter templates, I also often find that they are not really super responsive. Yeah. You can find problems with like uh, certain screen sizes. It's like, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Know? So you still have to yeah. do, you still got to do all yeah, the so work. You still got to go anyway. figure out what they did. You got to go figure out what they did and then, and then yeah. how to fix it, you know? So, so, so um, yeah. Well, how do you start that process of the, the creators? And also you don't have photography. Sometimes you go, you know, I'd do this if I had photography. <laughs> you know, custom, not, not stock photography. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, well, we start all our projects with placeholders. So we use stock photos at first and uh, Laura Mipsum mm -hmm. to place things where we want them to go because some, some clients, they just need to see something. They need to see how it's going to look and they, and they need your help. They need your guidance. And some already know what they're, what they have in mind. And some of them are just completely hands off. They're like, you will give you the material, just build something for us that's going to work. Um, now, in terms of building out the site itself, design block is real. <laughs> and uh, I always liken it to, you know, when a writer is writing something in a notebook and they write that page and they hate it and then they crunch it up and throw it in the wastebasket. Mm -hmm. We've had that, but for websites and it's horrible. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <I got> <laughs> the, the, but the way we get around that um, is we just tell ourselves from the moment we get a project, we must have anything, something put together within the first 36 hours. So it doesn't matter if it's, uh, uh, you know, a featured area with a header and a footer and some something, you have to put something out there that's going to get the juices flowing. And even if you end up scrapping that thing, at least it's going to get us us moving right um because back in the day i i would just i'd go weeks and i wouldn't have built anything because i don't yeah. know you know i'm looking at inspiration and all that stuff like that the other part that really helps is there's a book that i recommend everybody read if you do this for clients it's called um story brand by donald miller story brand by donald miller uh, Donald Miller, Miller builds websites, or at the time he was talking about building websites from the standpoint of a story. And uh, I adopted this many, many years ago, and I've never had a problem since. So basically your website is conveying a message and you want to build your website according to that message. So for instance, let's actually take a look at, let me share something with you. I'm going to give you guys some insider secrets here. <laughs> as if you haven't been doing that the whole time <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna give you some insider secrets here actually okay uh whoops oh wait let me share that share okay can everybody see this site 
So yeah. this is another real estate website. This one's also building cadence. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, okay, perfect. So you see this site and this is a type of header that we build. And why do we build this header this way? Well, we want when someone is on the website scrolling around, assuming they're on a desktop, there's a version for mobile, we want them to be able to just move over and call or shoot, shoot, shoot over an email at any time. So at any decision point, they have access to a call to action. Okay. So when we're, when we're thinking about this, we're asking, well, do we just want to put a phone number here or do we just want to leave that blank or how do we want to do the navigation? And we typically go for this type of navigation where you have the logo on the left and you have uh, the navigation in the middle or on the bottom and we have the call to action all the way to the right. This is a uh, this is a known layout method for business. So when someone's looking at your website, especially in the West, we read from left to right. So the last thing you're gonna see is gonna be on the right. And that's where you wanna put your call to action in the header, okay? So that solves that problem. And we can do different variations of this. There are so many different variations. Uh, one of the tutorials I want to do are header variations that you can do uh, in Cadence. There's a lot of really good ones. Then the next thing that you want to have is you want to have this featured area right here. And the purpose of this featured area is for you to convey whatever your unique selling proposition is or whatever your aspirational statement is. So when I tell a client, we need an aspirational statement. Basically, we, we need to know what is the promise that you make to your clients so that when they get to your website, immediately they can understand what to expect. They will know what you do and they know what to expect because you only have a, a few seconds. So you see right here, it says achieve real estate success with your own Kansas City real estate team. So they're saying, hey, we've got a team and you're gonna be successful with whatever real estate transaction you're doing, whether you're buying or selling. And then right after that, we have the call to action that follows that, okay? So, and then we get into an introduction to the team Right, so this is a very, this is actually a, a specific formula that we're using. Featured area with unique selling proposition, introduction to the team, and then communicating from the perspective of the buyer and you're dealing with their issues, right? Buying or selling a home can feel overwhelming. As your real estate team, we are here to start you off on the right foot. So immediately you're telling them, hey, we get it. This buying and selling stuff can be stressful, but this is what we do for a living and we're gonna help you and so on, right? And then we do a little bit more of that. And then if you have, if your client has specific um, customers that they're targeting, you wanna put those customers on the page somewhere. So here we know they target buyers and they target sellers. So we have sections dedicated to each one. Okay, so if I'm a buyer, she's talking to me. If I'm a seller, she's also talking to me as well. Then we have some testimonials. And then this is the final piece before we get to the fat footer. We always now have some way of telling people what the next step is to success, right? So what are the, what are the, what, what do we do now? So now we've, got, we've looked at all this information. What do we do now? Well, step one, make a call. Step two, we create a plan. Step three, we succeed together and followed by a call to action. And so we can take this and we can do different variations of this. We can move it around. We can do different ones. And it actually always works. I'll show you another good example. Uh, Tino, you'll like this one because you asked about e-commerce. So here's an example. And, uh, oh, we just, made, we just made a modification to this. Okay, so here's an example. So this, this uh, uh, company is uh, owned by a... Uh, a very, um, a very good orthopedic surgeon, and he focuses on foot pain. And he sells this uh, shoe insole that alleviates pain from plantar fasciitis, okay? So he's got a video here. We have the product right there, and then we have links to get to the product. But you kind of see it almost follows the same similar thing. We've got the call to action here on the right and the logo on the left, and then more calls to action here. This is also built in cadence, by the way. So as you continue to scroll down and you consume this content, kind of do the same thing. Here's the testimonials again, but this is a different layout of testimonial. Here's the product. Here's the client. 
right? You're talking to the client again, the, not my client, but their clients, right? Their ideal client is right there. And then we have the 30 day money back guarantee. And here it is again. One, determine your shoe size. Two, buy your luck step in so Three, enjoy your feet again. Get pain relief. Same formula, different product entirely. Okay. So um, the way we get around that is we have all these different formulas and we have different ones. They're not all like this, but we have different ways of presenting information. And that will allow us to sort of get away from being so design focused and more focused on guiding the customer using the story brand method. Okay. I can go on about story brand forever and ever, but that, and that's just one way story brand is not the way, but there are so many other ones that you can use. Uh, but Donald Miller is a great book uh, to read. It's called story brand, check it out. And um, it will help you uh, not be so stuck so much on design, but more stuck on purpose of the, of the page. Yeah. 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 And then you can also talk to your clients about that when they have great ideas for how their design should be, but they're not necessarily designers, right? So you're just thinking about it from their perspective. You can help them shift that thinking so they can think about it from their customer's perspective. You know, how does your, will, will your customer like the picture of Fluffy the cat in the corner like you think that they're going to like, or would they rather see how you can help them? And you kind of help guide them in that process. You become more mm -hmm. valuable to them. Yeah. Super helpful. Yeah. It, and it, it, sometimes I've come to the conclusion where I've gone, I've done something and I go, it's all pretty, pretty standard design, but it's clean. Yeah. And so in the end, I was, I, I was, I convinced myself I was happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was actually, but, it, yeah. but I, that I, can't, and a lot of your stuff is that Thank very you. clean, really easy to navigate, real simple, clear messaging, simple, clear messaging. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Uh, oh, Aaron has a question. Hi, Aaron. Yeah. Hey, um, that's funny because, uh, I, uh, I was, I was asked by uh, somebody who was interested in some web design work and I could tell right away that he was like, well, I, I want something, you know, on the cheap. And I've been really wanting to just avoid people that, that keep wanting that. And so what I said was, uh, well, if you don't really have much of a budget, you could buy the marketing uh, made simple a book that uh, D Donald Miller just just wrote. Okay. And uh, I, I told him it's like, look, I, I spent uh, over a grand on his uh, his story brand class. I think it was absolutely worth it. Uh, but, uh, you know, read that book and, uh, you know, do what it says. Uh, because one of the questions that he came to me asking was that he wanted to make he he wanted to make his site more interactive. And I was asking, well, what do you mean by that? And I took a look at it and I could see that it was, it, it really wasn't conveying like, you know, what the benefit for the cu customer. It's more about like, Oh, I'm, I'm this great thing yeah. and, and everything. And here, read more about me. And uh, here's, um, and, and so I, I was, Kind of thinking that it's like you know that what what you really need to do is to craft your message it doesn't really need to be more interactive but i didn't i didn't want to say that out loud i, I yeah. was thinking <laughs> now i'll let some experts uh to tell them sorry my dog's barking oh no it's okay that's okay <laughs> no that's great yeah um you know people have uh, have their have ideas of what they what they want and sometimes it just and it's, it's good because you ask them you know a good question is you know why why do you why you where what's driving that desire um, and that's a mark of a good consultant um, is you ask you know because a lot of times they may think that um, and they're usually thinking from their perspective 
And sometimes they're also thinking because they heard a customer say something like that. You know, sometimes I, I get, uh, oh, my client said that the, uh, the website was hurting their, their eyes because it had the sliding images behind all the text. Can you fix that? And I would say, well, how many customers said that? Just the one. I'm like, so you're going to change your whole website <laughs> based on this one customer. What if all the other ones like the moving image? Then what are you going to do? So, you know, the, the question then becomes, okay, is it, is it interfering with, with them actually doing business with you or engaging with the website? If it's too much of a distraction, if you get enough people who are complaining about it, then we should change it. But one person is just not enough. Or, or you, right, you are just not enough. I just don't, I just feel like the site needs more movement, more things moving in and out and stuff like that. Well, why do you need that? Well, I just, I just feel like it will make the website more engaging. They say, well, more engaging for who? For you? Yeah. Okay. So are you going to be buying stuff from yourself? No. Okay. So why don't we ask, why don't we see what your customers think? Let's find 10 customers that think the same thing and then we'll do that. And I, I call that you're saving the client from themselves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sometimes, yes. Right? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's always good to, to let people know, hey, websites are a marketing tool. There is a system and a style for marketing. And this is why I always say you, you always want to be learning and improving and reading so that you can always help them. You can be the market expert. And some clients will recognize that right away. They will say, oh, yeah, this guy really knows what he's talking about. Let's just let him do what's going to work and let's not interfere with that. Yeah. 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 All right. Anybody else? Oh, I see a hand. All right. We've got uh, Michael Noter. Hey, David. All right, buddy. Thanks for having hey Michael. Hey, Clifton, a great presentation. I want to compliment you on your uh, delivery style. Thank very, you. Very trusting, very calm. It's, it's, it's great. I appreciate it. I have that. a couple of quick questions. Uh, and one's a little self serving, but uh, so I've been using Cadence. I don't know. I did four websites in the last three, four months. Okay. And it's really great. I, I really like it, but it's a little glitchy. Every once in a while, formatting is like, I can't really figure it out. It's like, it works so great most of the time. And then all of a sudden, there's something I cannot figure out. And I don't know why. It, I don't, have you experienced that as well? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But uh, yeah, with every tool I've ever used, there's always some glitch and I've, yeah. I've just come to accept it as part of the <laughs> part I of the figured, process i figure that's what your response is the second thing i want to ask you about is i i am i'm not really a web guy but i've got sucked into the web universe and i've been around it for maybe i don't know 15 20 years but the last three four years suddenly i'm like maintaining websites and building them. i'm up to like 20 now oh, wow. um, the, the woocommerce people asked me to host something called woo wednesdays I've been co-hosting for three years. And I've been hosting the last year. And I also have a beginner intermediate website. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to like maybe do this presentation for the WooCommerce people. We get about 15 to 20. It's Woo Wednesdays. Um, you know, you, you, you got a, you're a great resource. I think some of my people that come to would actually like to hire you, but uh, it's up to you. So I'm, I'm, I'm only asking on down the line, maybe nothing immediately, but uh, you have a great presence very yeah. trusting persona. I, I really appreciate that. Um, you're up Thank front you. about your charges and all that stuff. That's all good stuff. I think uh, I think some of my WooCommerce people would benefit from you know checking you out. Yeah, uh, shoot me an email. And let's book something. So I is your um, I, I put it contact in the chat. on the on the on the uh, the meetup.com site or how do we? I mean, um, I, I have your YouTube stuff, so I know where to find you now. Okay. Yeah. He just, he just put, put it, it in, in the chat. I put it in the chat. Clifton at and I can, WP. I can connect you guys if you need to too. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank Michael you. did a WooCommerce thing for us a couple two meetups ago. Yeah, but I'm okay. not at your level. There's a couple other people. The the great thing about my Woo meetups, my Woo Wednesdays, is I have people that are very knowledgeable. They're running 30, 40 WooCommerce sites. So oh, between cool. us, we we do pretty good for. Uh, but, you know, you know, it's, it's the great thing about the, the WordPress community and the WooCommerce community is that it's very engaging and very supportive and and you're very free with your information. I appreciate all that. Right? Of course. 
So, yeah, no so problem. Nice job, Clifton, and thank you for uh, presenting today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Do you, um, quick question, do you have any social media or like Instagram or anything that you that you use like that or is it just uh, the YouTube? It's just a YouTube, just yeah. YouTube. I have social media stuff, but I'm not, I'm not very active on it just because I'm so busy. Uh, but YouTube, yeah, I, I have that. And that's, that's going to be pretty much my, my outlet. I may start doing more stuff on, uh, on Instagram and maybe Facebook at some point, but right now it's just YouTube. Any other questions? <laughs> I'm reading, I see the chat. Oh, hey, you're very welcome, everybody. I'm just seeing some of this stuff now. <laughs> if it weren't past yeah. dinner time, I think everybody would want to keep you here all night. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. So yeah, well, no. well, this is Happy fantastic. This is this is our longest meetup we've ever done. Oh, uh, really? And we, oh, have, okay. we kept uh, almost everybody till the end. Oh, that was fantastic. really good. That says a lot, man. So it really says a lot. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I could ask you questions for the rest of the night. I don't want to keep you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, hey, I, I hope it I'll was helpful. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to just to speak with you guys. And um, thank you very much, David, for, for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah. We started talking about this a couple months ago, two or three, yeah. probably three. I don't know. I looked probably three months ago. We first connected very beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was re really great to make it happen. And uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank really, you. really good. Yeah. Really good. And maybe we can do it again at some point. At some and so time. then this will be up on our uh, on the SAC uh, uh, WordPress meetup group web uh, YouTube channel soon. And um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, just go ahead to, to Clifton's channel and explore it. I mean, um, uh, a Tino, am I saying your name right? Tino? Is it Tino? That is 100% right. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, there's a there's a video you asked about e-commerce sites. I mean, Clifton's uh -huh. got a two-hour thing on building out this e-commerce store, and it's a clothing store. It's really cool. Yeah. Cool. Great site. Thank you. Great site. And a couple of follow-up sites, uh, follow-up videos to that where he did the, mo the mobile optimizations, and then another video where he took the same site and did mobile opposite optimizations, and then took the same site and also added on the pro cadence stuff. Yeah. Really great. I mean, you can learn a lot just by going through. Yes, I'll, and, I will watch yeah. those probably yeah, check it out. tomorrow. I put some, uh, I put yeah. some resources on there. So you have all the yeah. all the images and stuff that you yeah. need. Because I always like to, I, I like to put, I like to put out tutorials that people can replicate yeah. um, without, without, you know, as, as much as I can. So I'll probably yeah. be getting cadence like tonight just to test it out <laughs> for my next couple of projects. Yeah. Even um, the free I, version is very powerful. So it's totally worth trying out, even just the free one. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I do want to thank you, David. This is my first meetup. Oh, um, good. Okay. I'm yeah, I'm new to the area. And I yeah. was like, okay, how do I like talk to people and meet people? So I just, you know, Googled like WordPress people. And um, that's clearly not what I Googled, but uh <laughs> you guys came up and this was like a great experience. So thank you, David. Fantastic. Thank you, Clifton. This is an amazing presentation. You're welcome, Tino. Thank you. Yeah. You're down in San Francisco, I take it, right? No, I'm in Sacramento. Oh, you are? Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, all right. Well, you're welcome. I remember going, to, I remember my first meetup I went to, I hardly knew anything about WordPress. And I was like, can I go? Is it okay? I'm like, am I allowed to go? Like, I don't really know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. All right, everybody. Well, thank you. Uh, well, uh, definitely join up on the uh, our, our meetup group there, Tino. And um, I usually send the emails out on the it's the first Tuesday of the month. Uh -huh. First Tuesday of the month. Um, if you are interested in WooCommerce stuff, Michael's thing is called Woo, Woo Wednesday. Wednesday. I think it's I think it's at noon. Is that right, Michael? On 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 Wednesdays at yeah, noon Pacific time. Noon Pacific time. Um, so uh, and then there's there's other you know, meetup groups too. There, I think there's a San Jose and Petaluma. Yeah, uh, Petaluma Eagle Group. does San Jose, Santa Cruz, and he's a for yeah. on the development side. He's really, really good. So, yeah, yeah. So, well, glad to have you. So, Ooh, Wednesday just found it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, all right, guys. All right, it's supper time. Enjoy your supper. <laughs> all right, thanks. Thank pleasure. you. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.